Hello everybody, it's Trevor Selescu from Monster Hobbies in High River, Alberta, Canada. Well, pretty soon we'll be playing our Age of Sigmar tournament at the store. And uh, in order to do that though, I have to make a few models for our tabletop. So here's one that's sort of in the works. This is a crashed meteor with a bit of the tail as it hit into the dirt um, from space, you know. And uh, I made this out of a piece of wood, and this looks like a golf ball, but I can show you it's not. It's actually these styrofoam balls I got at the dollar store, and I cut them in half so that they'd fit flat on a little piece of wood. So <clears throat> this is for a section in our tournament. It's a meteor strike. And it's supposed to, each table is supposed to get two of these because one falls into your deployment zone and the other falls into the enemy deployment zone. And you're trying to get control of these meteors by the end of the game. So we're just going to cut one of these out and I'm going to show you how to do that using a skill saw. So I've drawn out the shapes on our uh, piece of plywood here. Yeah, you can see them kind of comet tails. This is a very thin piece of plywood. It's about, oh, I'd say about a sixteen inch, sixteenth of an inch. And uh, yeah, you can see the um, the little pieces of ply, three ply. So it's good sturdy stuff. So anyway, you're going to turn on your skill saw and it's going to get noisy, but we're going to follow with the blade. Remember, you want to keep your fingers away from the blade and all that fun stuff. We're going to follow around the circle and the comet tail. I've got a lot of these to cut out, but let's just zoom in and I will show you how I cut one out with it and not cut my fingers off. Okay, remember, to, let's see now. Oh yes, I should have done this in pre-production. Let's go back. Go back. About there. Okay. So you want to keep this off the table a bit and I like to turn it on and then introduce it and saw around. So let's do that. All right, we've got one out. <clears throat> okay, so now you can see there's some spots on the lines that we have to get, but we're not going to use our saw to do that because here I have a block of sandpaper and I also have a half round file. So we're just going to file out some of these little bits. You always want to sort of hold the file so that you can follow the blade and watch the line at the same time. Okay, so um, the other thing is when you get all the way around, you want to file this at a bit of an angle, like that, a little bit more actually, to give your ground that slope that would happen if, uh, you know, it, to make it not look like a big square block on the tabletop. So I don't know how well you can see this, but that's what I did here. 
Anyway, the finished result will look like this, and I'm going to paint this white ball with some gray and some yellow and stuff in there so that it looks like it fell from the sky. So I just had a problem with this old uh, Black & Decker skill saw. This screw in here, right there, that holds the blade in this little chuck here, is completely stripped. The blade fell out, and uh, that was it for the screw. So Black & Decker. I don't know if you can buy this thing anymore, but <laughs> I don't know. Now check this one out. This is a Craftsman my dad repaired. It's from the 1950s. Look at this aluminum casing. You don't get this anymore, kids. But look at, look at how their chuck is held on. Okay, I don't know if you can... Allen screw and an Allen screw in here. It's holding this blade in two places. There's no way that's going to fall off. And it even has an adjuster here so that you can take the pitch of this thing and go cut at 45 degree angle. Which I don't think the Black, Black & Decker has. I don't know. I'm not even going to look. <laughs> Saber saw. Okay, watch this baby in action. This is a nice cut. And now... Demonstration cut, but you heard how nice that was. It just went zhoo right through like butter. So yeah, if you find one of these old babies, repair it and use it. <laughs> all right, so I've cut out all the shapes. There's a nice little pile of them. It actually is just enough for four tables. <laughs> I don't know how many people are going to come for my tournament, but um, <laughs> I don't know. Anyway, so what I've done is I'm sanding the edges here and trying to get to where my pencil line was and make this thing the right shape. And I think this one is pretty much there. And I'm going to take on the table and just round down these edges and make it nice and flat like the other one. In fact I found using the file was a little better. You want to lean it pretty flat. Try not to hit your fingers. And remember when you use skill saws, ask your parents' permission and wear your eyeglasses. Be in a padded room and have bulletproof clothing on and every all that safety stuff, you know? <laughs> Just because you never know what will happen. I joke a little, but seriously. You can also do it this way. Try not to sandpaper your fingers off. <sighs> Remember, you're trying to make it round so it just doesn't look flat on the table. We are about ready to glue the styrofoam ball onto the shape that I've just sanded and perfected out. So I'm using this product called No More Nails. It's Canadian-based LePage. And um, this is in, of course, a caulking gun. <laughs> so, <laughs> so you just squeeze a bit of this out. Oh, I guess there's none left. Yep, I think I'm empty. Oh no, there we go. Haha, <laughs> good. Because I don't need to be empty right now. Uh, it's got to be right at the end though. There. Okay. Buy a new one tomorrow. Okay, so I've got it there, and I don't know if you can see a bit of a pencil line still there. I used a compass to make the circles on the wood. And 
I gave myself some extra room around the edges of the wood. <coughs> Pardon me, so that I could taper that edge down. So it just wasn't the ball right on as the outer perimeter. It also protects a bit of the edge of the ball too. And so this is going to be kind of a gluey process. I've got another product here by Elmer's and this is called wood filler. It's water base. All the stuff is water base. So let's just put away my... You always want to back this off and pull it out a little bit just to relieve the tension in your caulking gun. I'm assuming that you guys have all these tools and know how to use them. If not, there's a thousand YouTube videos on how this goes. So what I do with this no more nails... Oh, this old can will be my docking station for this thing so it doesn't get on the table. Just squish out some of this wood filler stuff. Now usually you should allow this stuff to dry, you know, the glue and everything. But uh, for the purposes of this video, we're not going to do that. So I'm getting some of this back here. This stuff is going to act as that sort of edge dirt of the meteor crashing into the ground. So you see I'm just smoothing this with my finger for now. I'm going to make some not so clean looking images. You want to keep that edge that you just sanded pretty nice though. And I'm just smearing this around like so. You want to get some of it on the bottom part of the ball. You know, just so it looks like it's connecting into the dirt. Now luckily the ball is a nice dry area too, so you can put your finger there as you do this outer edge. Now you want this area, not the edge, there I'll show you in a sec. So you want to take your finger and make it look like this thing dragged across the ground And you can do this kind of thing in the front to make it look like it's disturbed the dirt in the ground. Oops, come on. And that is your land grounded surface, which is taken. Smarten that edge up a little bit. Check for any holes, because those will show up when you paint it. And you can actually wipe some of this off the ball just above. You still want some in there. But yeah, wrap that around the ball. And then we're going to let that dry. And you paint it. <laughs> so there it is.